Meta just found scaling laws for LLM reasoning training, reinforcement learning. So this is exact recipe on what strategies to use, what techniques, what hyperparameters to get most out of LLM reasoning to make the best LLM uh, reasoning model. In the beginning, they explained that pre-training has very strong and scientific scaling laws, very tested, but reasoning, reinforcement learning doesn't have it. So now reasoning feels more like an art where scientists kind of go by feeling. And this paper wanna, wants to turn this into science, where scientists can look at this paper and go by real data. They did a massive 400,000 GPU hours of training. For me, if I get four hours of GPU training, it's good. Their main discovery is this S-curve. So, uh, but keep in mind, this here is a logarithmic scale. So this shows the performance during training. So in the beginning, when you train, you get a bit less improvement, but then at a certain point, your improvement starts to grow rapidly. And then there is a plateau. And what logarithmic scale here means is that this is actually 1000 to 4, 8000, 16000. So I will show you if you uh, draw this on a linear scale, it would be like this. In the beginning, you get very fast, very fast improvements and eventually start to slowly uh, drop off. So this is the linear scale. So this is in reality very fast in the beginning and eventually dropping off and plateauing. But they draw logarithmic scale because uh, this is in reality uh, some companies have like 10 times more compute than the next 10 times 10 times. So compute is actually scaling logarithmically or uh, in this way in reality. And this is also easier to understand because when I showed you the linear scale, it was always just growing, growing, growing and slower and slower and that's it. But here we see more details in log scale. Uh, in the beginning, it's growing a bit slower, but then if you have a lot of compute, then it's growing a lot faster. And that's how scaling laws work in pre-training as well. As you add 10 times, 10 times, 10 times more compute, the, the performance is growing linearly as you add quadratically or exponentially more compute. Join my school to become AI researcher. It's free right now for the first 100 members and there is, there is already 39 and then it's gonna become paid, so hurry up. Besides this, they also uh, figure out the best way to scale, the best recipe. So uh, this scale uh, RL is a um, combination of different methods they tested and they just picked out the best methods and they uh, wrote it here in scale in, in this framework on how to do this. And so they tested this on 100,000 GPU hours. You see here uh, the fitted curve and then predicted here predictions, it would start to plateau. And this blue one is for 8B dense model. And this one is for mixture of experts. But this one is just a bigger model, more parameters. So it's going to plateau a bit higher. This is the formula to calculate performance. It's actually very simple. So reward gain is asymptotic reward gain times compute efficiency. So first of all, there is this asymptotic reward or this ceiling. And no matter how much compute you put, it will never cross this maximum possible reward, maximum possible performance. So you see here it starts to approach uh, the ceiling and never crosses it. And they call this asymptotic reward here. And different methods have different ceilings. So you'll see later that they will tell you which methods have like higher ceiling and which ones you should use. Then also they have this steepness B. So the higher the B means the method will approach its ceiling faster. So there are two things important here. First, the ceiling is the maximum possible performance and how fast it approaches, how fast it trains to maximum possible uh, so that's compute efficiency. So this B is kind of compute efficiency where it shows you how fast it's going to approach its ceiling. So you want it to approach as fast as possible and you want it to have the highest ceiling as high as possible. The main advantage here is that you can train on a bit of compute and then extrapolate and predict the performance later. So you see this dotted dashed curve is their prediction and then they later validated that with actual training and you see that it actually fits. So this extrapolation works based on their framework. And uh, this may seem like majority of the training here you see, but this is a log scale. 
actually as you move a little bit here the compute necessary is doubling so this is actually massive amount of compute later here this is actually a smaller amount of compute because compute is doubling on this scale their formula here you can calculate your reward based on your compute and it's actually very simple so uh, your reward is equal to r0 which is your beginning reward starting how much ai gets reward without any training and then a here is the maximum possible reward so you see here r0 plus maximum possible minus beginning over one plus uh, c mid is compute to reach this mid reward middle middle amount of reward possible so how many gpu hours and c total is a total amount of hours you want to input so this c you can just put whatever amount of gpu hours you want to calculate the reward for and b is steepness of this curve which is like a number so that's how you can get uh, re uh, expected rewards based on your compute hour c that you want to put in so you can just predict it now different reinforcement learning methods have different ceilings of their maximum performance here you see the different methods cispo which is uh, from minimax m1 and then gspo from quen and then dapo from uh, bydance and keep in mind this scale is zoomed in so this is not two times better this is just a little bit better check the scale here and you see that uh, gspo does have does learn more earlier but it has lower ceiling uh, cispo has highest ceiling here so it learns most eventually and then dapo kind of is a little bit worse performing than these two so this cispo uh, by uh, minimax m1 is actually praised in this paper a little bit as one of the best if not the best and then also using 32 fp32 precision in the final layer which is lm head which is the layer that generates the next token it improves the ceiling a lot here you see the scale is still same so fe32 precision it's still going up and you see b and a so slope and maximum uh, ceiling reward are increased and i presume it's a bit slower to learn here because it's still in fp32 so there is more is more compute is necessary and this lm head at the end can be huge it's it's very big so this can have significant impact on slowing down a little bit uh, in the beginning here but eventually because of the 32 uh, bit precision then it's gonna surpass also the bitter lesson some methods seem better if you have a bit of compute they learn faster but later they get surpassed by other methods so just uh, training it a bit you don't know exactly which method will work best if you have a lot of compute and this is figure two uh, by the way so their methods scale reinforce rl that they just put in a bunch of different uh, this is not a new method this is just a combination of best working methods and the rules and it uh, has highest ceiling you see i don't know why my brother deep seek here is kind of underperforming and you see here even like their prediction and this grpo is kind of going down i'm not sure what's happening i don't want to like immediately say that uh, grpo is worse um maybe but i also don't want to say that they, that they didn't implement it properly so i don't know what's happening here but this is still a log scale so you know the difference here is a lot smaller than shown on this image so maybe it's just how it is and the third thing they found is that uh, many commonly used methods like data curriculum advantage normalization and loss aggregation actually just help uh, the model train faster reach the ceiling faster but they don't lift the ceiling just reach it faster now i want to talk about their method scale rl where they just uh, tested and combined a bunch of different uh, methods the best ones first they compare two kind of data loading and policy update methods so first is this ppo off policy where the model just generates a bunch of answers to the question and after it generates all of the answers thousand answers then uh, all of them get processed and then the model is updated uh, based on which answers are correct which are not correct the rewards and stuff but the main point here is that it first generates a bunch of answers and then it's updated and then pipeline rl doesn't wait for so many examples it kind of works 
in parallel with generation and training works in parallel. So generation generates samples, sends them to training, desire updates, weights, and then uses and then pushes them back. And then this generator uses new weights. So it's more parallel. Uh, it's like this guy is producing these guys, using it, valuing, training this guy. And they found that this pipeline, this parallel uh, training is better. You see, it's a lot faster here. Actually, it's way faster. You see, it needs like 2,000 hours, where this guy needs like four or 5,000 hours, uh, this off policy. So, and it also uh, maybe reaches a bit higher ceiling here. Pipeline RL reduces the amount of idle time in the training process. So it doesn't need to wait for this uh, trainer. It just keeps generating. This guy keeps training. It's working all together. Then it measures three different loss functions or optimization methods, DAPO, GSPO, and CISPO. So I got Gemini here to quickly summarize, although I think I need to create videos on each of them. And I have a good video on GSPO. I spent like 10 hours making it so you can check it. But it just seems like they find that CISPO uh, has highest ceiling, so CISPO is their choice. Then there is this uh, zero variance filtering. So zero variance is uh, when you, for example, generate 16 answers for a single prompt and every single answer is wrong or every single answer is correct. So there is not much or if anything that you can learn from there. It would be better to have some wrong, some correct, so the model can learn what kind of answers are wrong what kind of answers are correct. Also in the formula, when we calculate like advantage and averages and stuff, you'll notice that advantage here is zero. So there is nothing the model is learning if every answer is correct or every answer is wrong. Because advantage is based on calculating how much this particular answer is better or worse than the mean or average of all of the other answers. But if every single answer is wrong, then then this answer that's also wrong, it's not better or worse uh, at all than every other, uh, the mean, the average. So that means advantage is zero and there is no learning. Interestingly, it seems like if you remove these useless examples, it can reach higher ceiling in training as well. So it can learn even more. I'm not sure why. I would imagine that these useless examples are just wasting compute and eventually the ceiling would be same. But it looks like the ceiling is even higher if you remove these useless examples. And also, once the model masters a certain prompt or question, so it gets it like more than 90% correct, then you should remove it. And if you remove it, it will uh, reach higher ceiling here as well. So we are removing prompts that model starts to get very good at. And then also higher batch size will reach higher asymptote here. So you see you have very large batch size and it starts off learning slowly. So you would presume that it's worse than smaller batch sizes, but eventually it's going to overtake smaller batch sizes. And same goes for uh, generation length. So longer context initially starts off worse, but eventually surpasses and achieves better reasoning with longer context. This just goes the scale, uh, follows the scaling laws, batch size, context length, bigger, better. And then uh, reinforcement learning is a bit random in itself in large language models. So they try and train exact same thing, their recipe uh, scale RL three times. And you see every time is actually going to have a bit different uh, ceiling and a bit different. But these two times here uh, look exactly the same, these two. And then this one is a bit different. Join my school community to become AI researcher. That's free right now for a short period of time. And then it's going to become paid. So see you in the next video.